Um, let me give you the conclusion of my talk right now. Jonathan asked the question, you know, what, what is needed now going forward? And the conclusion is we need more research. <laughs> so just so you know, you, if you, for those of you who are really hungry, you can go now and have lunch. <laughs> the rest is just annotation to fill in the gaps. I want to thank uh, my colleague, uh, Jim Spohr from IBM, uh, who has been a collaborator with me on this going all the way back. As you'll see in just a moment, this is a very large, very complex area. Many of you have done excellent work here. We will probably offend many of you just because in the time I have, I will not be able to cite all of the good work you have also done as part of this. So please accept my apologies in advance. And, and my talk is inevitably uh, retrospective, partial, incomplete, biased, all of those things that many of us now have learned to study uh, in these processes. But nonetheless, I think there's a, some interesting insights uh, that I learned from pulling this together, and I hope that you find them interesting as well. So to begin with where this uh, started, uh, at the risk of stating the obvious, whether you look at the largest uh, countries by the size of their labor force, or whether you look over time uh, in any one country, uh, either of the, either the cross-sectional view or the longitudinal view will show you that services are uh, becoming a vastly larger part of economic activity. Uh, again, at the risk of stating the obvious. Uh, at what also became interesting, though, is at this level, at the macroeconomic level, when you drill down to individual firms, it's often the case that for many of the firms themselves, including firms we used to think of as primarily agricultural, or firms we used to think of as primarily manufacturing, their own businesses are oft, often shifting uh, towards services as well. So from the large scale to down to the more specific level, uh, we see this rise of services there uh, as well. And what I'm showing you here is, in this case, is IBM. And look how large that has become. And look how small it used to be. So the company has truly transformed itself uh, in this process. Uh, and as I'm going to argue in a few minutes, uh, this is not an easy transformation to make. It may sound very effortless that things naturally evolve towards services. There is indeed an evolutionary process, but there's an all, there is adaptation, but there's a lot of selection that goes on in this process and a lot of very difficult uh, problems to overcome in managing such a transition. Uh, when we began to think about what Jonathan described as a more robust language to make sense of services, service systems, and, and for me specifically, innovation in services, uh, we found ourselves having to grapple with a very poorly defined, complex situation. Uh, to give you a sense of the world I lived in, when I, for those of you who are familiar with open innovation, a lot of that work w emanated from close study of companies' R&D processes inside their research laboratories. Well, for those of you who work in the services domain, you already know that many of these companies don't have R&D laboratories. Uh, so it's a very different context. Uh, and, we're, and what is the same and what's different is an important thing to sort out. 